you can, a vision of what God is like at the top. And you can order these differently, right? But I'm just saying the most holy, divine, you know, God-like you can think of as the Father. He seems kind of remote sometimes, but he's the, he's the Father, right? And then we have Jesus, the Son, who came and walked here and got dust on his feet and had to go to the bathroom and had people talking bad about him and stuff like that. And we have the Spirit who he left with us who connects us to God. So that's, that's sort of how I see God. I want you to know that we are each a community too. God made us in his image. What did that mean? Do, uh, does this, was this what God looks like? Well, actually, yeah, he does look like this. This is what God looks like on earth. This is what God looks like on earth, right? You are what God looks like on earth. But we're all a community. You can diagram it almost the exact same way. Look, if you, uh, if you got the image there, uh, we are spirit, soul, and body. Our spirit is the part that relates to God. Our body is the part, it's our earth suit. We walk around in it. You can't walk around in your spirit the same way you walk around on your legs, right? We are on this earth, but in the middle between the two, there's this soul. You know, the bottom part here, the body, that's material. We can see it. It's extended in space, right? The top part, the spirit, how do you measure it? How much does your spirit weigh? How long is it? How tall is it? I don't know. There isn't any of that. It's in the spirit. But in the middle, there's this soul part. And we, sometimes we neglect that part. Um, but I want you to understand that that part is important because that's, let's see, uh, next, next slide here. That's where we have a lot of problems. A lot of problems that the Bible really talks about, but we don't always address. So I want you to know here in the middle, in the soul, that's where your mind, will, and emotions are. And if you want, that's kind of where your personality is, where your brain is and your body. It kind of overlaps that part. The soul is the part of you that makes you you. And I call this the decision part, there, the decision zone, because, okay, here, here's how it goes, right? Your body lives on this earth and really likes pizza and sleep and drugs and sex and whatever else. It just wants to do whatever. It's like, yeah, I want that, right? That's what your body, your body just wants to do. Let's face it, if we were just animals, we would be just bodies, and we would just do whatever we wanted to do, right? Your spirit is like always facing God. It's like in heaven looking at God's face all the time, and it doesn't have any, it's like, why would I want to do all that messy stuff that's going to separate my relationship with God? I want to totally serve God with everything. Look, I don't care if you are strung out on drugs right now in a ditch on the side of the road. You have a spirit. If you're saved, your spirit has, is sitting before the throne of God, and it is serving and loving and praising God with all its worth right now. I don't care where you are. That's who you are. Your spirit is your raw identity. But the decider in the middle decides, am I going to side with the body or am I going to side with the spirit? And we got that decision every single day. And every single moment of every single day, we decide that. And I am sorry to say that I do not always decide with the spirit. Sorry. I eat that extra slice of pizza, right? Or I don't go to the gym, or I don't actually talk to the person who looks like they're really in need right now because I just really don't want to. Look, Christians don't like mental illness. We don't even like to admit that it's possible for us to have it. Oh, no, I'm, I'm going with the Lord, brother. I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm good. Oh, yeah? Well, you're, you're taking, I don't even remember the names of some of the medicine. You're, you're taking, uh, you, you know, oxycodone or whatever. Yeah? Okay. Maybe, maybe there's some soul healing needs to happen there. I want you to know inner healing is a name for the process, for a healthy process of dealing with soul wounds. Everyone needs it. I need it. And I'm going to tell you how it works. There's four major steps to inner healing. Follow Holy Spirit. Follow Holy Spirit, number one. Don't go off on your own into your hurt. You'll get lost there. If you like spend a lot of time going, me, 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 oh, all this, oh, what happened to me? You'll get lost in your own hurt. Follow Holy Spirit. Here's how you follow Holy Spirit. 
You ask him to lead you. He's faithful, he'll do it. Ask him to lead you and then go where he goes. Don't like explore there and go where he takes you. Don't go to the thing you think is your worst hurt because it probably isn't. It's probably something deeper and earlier and more poisonous that you never actually fixed. And he knows. So follow him. Ask him to lead you to the place in your mind where you're stuck and where you're hurt. And follow him there. And then here's something to do. When you get there, remember, you're safe. You keep holding on to his hand. And you ask him to tell you what's wrong. Don't tell him what's wrong. I was, I had, I was in the situation. Let's just see myself in a situation. Let's, uh, there was a, a woman that I, that I was helping through this, and she could see herself as a little child being abused, right? And it was ugly. I asked her, ask Holy Spirit, what are you feeling right then? And she's like, I'm terrified. I'm so angry. I'm so ashamed. Those are feeling words. Here's what's not a feeling word. I was attacked. That's about you attacking me. I was betrayed. No, that's about someone doing bad things to you. What were you actually feeling? Ask Holy Spirit to help you name it. This is really hard for us men because we just, like, we're either happy or we're mad. <laughs> there's not much in between, and there's no degrees of mad. We're just mad. And it's just not right. We're mad. Women can tell you 36 different words for why they're upset with things like that. It's awesome. So if you're married, ask your wife to help you with your vocabulary. But meantime, Holy Spirit can really help you to, to figure it out. And some people like to just like to visualize this nasty thing in them like this ball of goo or like a tumor or something. That's identifying the problem. When you're there, I want you to feel that hurt to really feel it, right? And then the second step is give it to Jesus because the truth is he already took it and he doesn't want you to have it. He paid for it all. Look, if he paid for it, why are you holding on to it? Why are you paying for it too? He's, he's not going to say, ooh, I don't want that one. That was ugly. No, he's, he already went through the ugly. He just wants you to give it up. So you got to say, Jesus, would you take this? I don't want this anymore. Sometimes people want their hurt. Do you know that? Because it empowers them. They're like, if I have this hurt, then I'll have the power to take revenge. Look, you're not an avenger, okay? Hurt will not help you. Give it to Jesus. That's step number two. If it was caused by your own sin, and this is something you ask Holy Spirit to, did I, did I do this? Was this me? That's the time to repent, right? Not everything was caused by you, but some things, that's where you say, hey, I actually did that. I was wrong, sorry. That's a great place to do it. Third step, let the father restore you. This is the father of the prodigal son. He, he, he's not sitting there with his arms crossed. He's sitting there with his arms out, waiting every day for you to come back. This is our father. Ask him to restore you. And what I like to do is I like to say, God, I have this I, I, I felt so wounded and, and so I felt so ashamed. Okay, God, would you give me something in, re in replacement for that? If it's shame, I'll ask for honor. If it's fear, I'll ask for peace. If I don't know what to ask, I'll ask Holy Spirit, what should I ask for? Because I need something different than this. And he'll tell you, because he's good. He's real good. He gives good gifts. Take them. Let the Father restore you. And then last, repeat this if you have to. So this is what I do with people. And we're going to do this in a minute if we have time, hopefully. Yeah, well. Um, ask the Holy Spirit to take you back to that place one more time. Hold his hand and walk there. And ask yourself, what do I feel now? It's probably going to be something different. If you felt shame before, you might feel anger now. Okay, let's go deal with the anger. Let's follow the Holy Spirit. Give it to Jesus. Receive from the Father. Follow the Holy Spirit. 
Give it to Jesus, receive from the Father, until you can go back to that place and you're free. Right? And then tomorrow, when Satan comes and attacks your soul and says, and you're like, oh, okay, it doesn't mean you're not healed, it just means you're healing. This is the process. After your healing, you gotta pursue God like your new drug. And when the, heal- the pain comes back, you go at it with, with what God has given you. You were healed. By his stripes, you were healed. Body, soul, and spirit. You were healed. This is what the Bible says, folks. It doesn't matter how you feel. It's just true. And you, how's your self-talk, right? Are you saying, oh, I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure I'm, I'm healed. Yeah, you are healed because that's what God said you are. I'm not asking you whether you feel healed or not today. I'm asking you to receive from him. And this is a process. Follow Holy Spirit. Ask Jesus to take it. Receive from the Father. Repeat it as often as you need every single day of your life. June 28th through 29th, we have a thing called Freedom Weekend, where it's going to be a time where we're going to go uh, deeper into inner healing, forgiveness, the love of God, deliverance, and um, all those things where we'll be able to get healed from any issues that we have, deliverance from any bondage that it's more of a like where we go further with God and during that weekend, you can sign up with us on our website, hungrygen.com and get more information about that. It's a weekend you don't want to miss. It's a time where you're going to get to know God more and more that when you serve God, you serve him with a pure heart, with a, with a free spirit and um, your life is, it will never be the same. So we want to see you there. And now let us, um, let us put our attention to your life group leader.